1923, Alexander Stewart, spelled S-T-E-U-A-R-T, produced a most extraordinary clock. He took out a patent on it, a clock that basically had an electric motor to run the clock and a pendulum that controlled the electric motor, and neither were connected. It was staggeringly accurate and totally brilliant in conception. Basically, all he needed was a motor that would run an ordinary electricity meter, and it would run slightly fast, and it would be corrected by the pendulum every second. Stuart demonstrated this clock, and it was accurate to between one and two seconds a month in air. He said that was the limit of its accuracy in air, because air is like a thin soup which you're going through. Put in, in vacuum, it, had, it would have much greater accuracy. Meek, J and D Meek, who were the top clock and match makers in Edinburgh, took up the challenge and produced an example, a unique example, in vacuum. And they mounted it in their shop on this big cast iron bracket. It is in vacuum, you evacuate it from the bottom, and you have um, in the back a uh, mercury barometer, so you can get the mercury pressure. And in fact, you can regulate it by the mercury pressure, finally, finally, finally. It is simplicity itself. It is very difficult to run, but it's simplicity itself how it works. Once you get it right, it locks. So there's a sequence that it runs through with the pendulum and the thing. You can see it instantly when it goes. Because it was produced in 1923, it wasn't used in all the observatories around the world. They already had their reeflers and their shorts and their Leroy tank regulators. They're called tank regulators in vacuum. And they were accurate to around about a second a year. Once you get more accurate than that, it's really almost down to the astronomer that you use rather than the clock to get the final degree of accuracy. If it had been produced 10 years, if, if Stuart had been 10 years earlier, every observatory in the world would have had this clock because they were so much cheaper. All you've got is literally an electricity meter, motor running, and a pendulum. And the beauty of it was, of course, it was used. It was sold to, the pa patent was sold to Mercer's, the chronometer makers, and they sold them in air to observatories that didn't have these reefless and so on, mostly in South America at the time. They were used to run, pa to run telescopes. They're perfect for telescopes. You've got to keep moving a big telescope continuously because the Earth is turning, and to keep it in sync. Because it's run with an electric motor, this clock, it doesn't tick. It doesn't tick the way that other, other clocks do. So you haven't even got the slight judder. It's a continuous movement on the telescope. The, one of these clocks was used in the Second World War at the Edinburgh Royal Observatory to produce the Greenwich time signal on the BBC. It was sufficiently accurate for that. The government reckoned that if Big Ben was hit by a by a bomb during the Second World War, it would be a major propaganda victory for the Germans. So they took Big Ben out for the duration of the war, and a Stuart regulator took over. 